Hello everyone, today I am starting a tutorial series on Unity's new GUI system. This series will not be covering the basics, there are already plenty of tutorials out there covering the basics. What I will be showing, however, is how to combine Unity's basic UI elements into elements that are common in other frameworks, like the frequently requested drop-down menu. If there are any elements you would like me to demonstrate in a future video, leave a comment and I will do my best to recreate it and make a video about how to do so. For today's episode, however, I will briefly cover the canvas and the rect transform. So as you can see here, this is paint yourself into a corner. Those who remember from December, I first introduced this game. I've completely redone the GUI. As you can see, everything now uses the new GUI system. What I will actually be doing though is I'm going to create a new scene and we're going to work with that. Whenever you need to add UI elements to your scene, what you need to do first is create a canvas. So that's what I'm going to do right here. You right click, select UI, and then select canvas. And now there are three different render modes for the canvas. Um, right here is screen space camera. I don't really use this too much. The idea I've gotten, if I think I understand it correctly, is that you pick a camera where your UI will appear in front of, but world objects can appear either behind or in front of the UI depending on where it's positioned. But no matter what, it's always transposed in front of the camera that you select. World space, it's as if the object is shown exactly as where it is and sized. So right now for these defaults this would be really huge because our game would be right down here at this bottom left corner, this really tiny space. So if you're going to use world space you'll want to of course scale it down first using the scale options and then from there you'd resize it to whatever you want. You would typically use this render mode to attach UI elements to game objects. Unity already has a tutorial on how to do this, so unless I state otherwise, most of the elements we'll be creating will be inside a screen space overlay canvas, and that is just the canvas appears in front of the game screen no matter what camera is being used. So right here, the canvas takes up this entire game space here. Let's create a UI element in here. So I'll just pick a panel because it's simple. You'll notice that inside the panel, the normal transform object has been replaced with a rect transform. Um, this is what I'll be covering for the rest of the tutorial. You'll see that there are five position values here. Left, top, position Z, right, and bottom. Position Z you will rarely use because since the GUI is 2D, you don't need to worry about how far away it is. So mostly we'll be using these four. However, these four change depending on where the anchors are. The anchors are the most important part of rect transforms. They determine what percentage of the screen space the anchor should be placed. And then your left, top, right, bottom are absolute pixel offsets from those anchors. The minimum anchor is the bottom left anchor. So this is zero, zero down here. Then the max anchor is the top right anchor. Now, if you watch, I will set the anchors to be on the center of the screen by using 0.5. As I said, it's a percentage, so by doing this, I'm putting it uh, halfway screen size. For UI elements inside of other UI elements, the percentage is the percentage of the space of its parent. In this case, because the parent is the canvas, it's the percentage of the screen size. Now, you'll see that our offsets have changed to position X, position Y, width, and height. This is because our anchors have met at the same spot. So instead of offsets, it's just worrying about position and size. If you are manipulating these through programming, first you must actually get the rect transform. It is not inside the transform object like normal. Instead, you must use get component and get rect transform. And then once you have done that, there are several properties you can modify. For the anchors, you want anchor min and anchor max, and those will allow you to modify the two anchors that I mentioned. As you might guess, they are floats and they use the same values that are used in the editor. And then from there, depending on how you have your anchor set, you want to modify different values. 
If you have them set up like you do here, which I do not recommend because you'd be using absolute pixel values and your sizes won't be the same across multiple devices or screen resolutions. But in this case, the properties you'd want to modify are anchored position to change position X and position Y and size delta, which will allow you to change the width and height. If your anchors are spread out like I had before, so I'll just undo this, then what you're modifying is offset min and offset max, which as you can imagine, offset min is offset from the anchor min and offset max is the offset from the anchor max. Now, one thing to keep in mind, top is how many pixels from the top. So if I input a positive value, you can see that it moved down a bit. However, if you were to input this in code for the offset max, you would want to put the negative of what you put in here because offset min and offset max settings use the actual X and Y scale instead of this relative idea. So the Y scale is positive up and negative down. So if you wanted to move 10 pixels down as I did here, you would have to input negative 10 for the Y of offset max, just to make that clear. Pivot is used for several things. The initial use, as mentioned in the basic tutorials, allows you to change its rotate point. However, it is also useful for scroll recs. For example, if you set the Y to 1, then your contents of your scroll rec will start at the top instead of in the center. So if you've had problems with having your scroll rec start at the top of your content, that's why you need to change the pivot. Other than that, rotation and scale are pretty much the same. Scale will scale down everything, including its contents. Here, I'll give an example of how you should properly size things. Inside this, I'll create a button. So here we have this button. Now if I were to show it here, you can see that if I change it to different dimensions, It's not visible here, but let's say I stretch this a bit. So let's say I made this bigger. Let's make this 400. Now let's go back here. Now if I were to change the dimensions, now we have a problem. Because we're using absolute pixels, our item is stretching off the screen. So how do we fix that? This is where I mentioned you should be using anchors. Typically, if you want your UI items to look exactly the same on all screens with the same aspect ratio, you would want the anchors positioned at the corners of your objects. So here I'm going to switch to the Rec Transform tool, and I'm going to move the anchors so that they're at the corners. And you can tell if they're at the corners if you watch your top and left and drop when it reaches zero. And we'll do the same for bottom and right. Sometimes if you have a hard time positioning the anchor, you may have to zoom in. It allows you to have more fine control over your anchor. And there we go, you can see that they're all at zeros now. And now if I were to change dimensions now, you can see it's sizing correctly. The relative percentage across the screen is the same in all cases. So no matter what screen size you have, as long as your aspect ratio is the same, our button is now going to look exactly the same on every single one of those screens. Now, of course, as you saw with portrait mode, difference between landscape and portrait, you may have to change some things because some of your buttons may become fatter, for example, when you switch to portrait mode because now the height of your screen is much larger. So sometimes you may have to experiment, but that is the way you should be setting up the dimensions of UI elements. So that's just a simple rundown of Rec Transforms. In the next episode, I will show how to make message boxes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.